So as it turns out, you don't need to train like Rocky in order to record audio like a pro. So what we're gonna do today is show you how you can improve your audio recordings so you can sound professional by using the right equipment, techniques, and adjusting the space around you. Well, let's get into it. Before we get started, if you do like the content, please like and subscribe down below so you can stay tuned and up to date on all the tutorials that we put out on this channel. If you're just starting your filmmaking career, you may be using your onboard microphones that you've already got built into your camera. These microphones are built to record scratch audio, which is an audio track or recording that isn't meant to make the final cut. For one, what they're gonna pick up the most is the thing that's closest to them, and that would probably be you while you're filming. If you're filming someone a little bit further away from the camera, it's not gonna pick up audio as good as a dedicated microphone would. What I'm using today to record my dialogue is a lavalier microphone. You may have seen lavs out in the wild, and they're typically put on the talent to record their specific dialogue. As you see here, I've clipped mine onto the top of my collar, but usually in films and TV shows, these are hidden in the actor's clothing or somewhere nearby where it can pick up the audio adequately. One of the most important attributes of a microphone is its pickup pattern. And this lavalier microphone has an omnidirectional pickup pattern. Omnidirectional means it picks up noises from all directions. This is great for using it on talent because as long as the talent is speaking near and close by the lavalier, it should pick up their audio just fine. One of the benefits of using a lavalier microphone is that once you have it set on your talent, you can kind of just leave it there for the duration of the shoot. As long as it's not getting obstructed, it's not getting any interference or noise happening on the capsule of the microphone, it should be good to go. Conversely, the downside is, is if you have to make any adjustments to that microphone, you're gonna have to stop the take, go near the actor and adjust the microphone to make sure it's sounding better. Next up, we have our shotgun microphone. The shotgun microphone is unique because of its pickup pattern. The shotgun microphone is really good at picking up sounds directly in front of the microphone capsule. This pickup pattern is called cardioid, hypercardioid, or even a shotgun pickup pattern. If you're noticing a trend, it's kind of the opposite of a lavalier mic. Whatever you point this microphone at, that's what it's gonna record and record really well. This means if you're on location and there is some excess noise, as long as it's not too loud or too distracting, it should clear it out pretty well. This doesn't mean if a car passes by and is honking their horn at you, you're not gonna hear it, but things like road noise or things off in the distance might not be picked up as strongly, especially if someone is speaking in front of the microphone while that is going on. Additionally, the way these shotgun mics are typically operated is via a boom pole. And you may have seen these boom poles in behind the scenes shots in movies and TV shows, but basically someone is in charge of making sure that that microphone at any given moment is directed at the person that they need to be recording. So unlike a lavalier microphone, which is dedicated to just one single person, a boom mic can switch between different sound sources at any given time. You do have to be careful though, because if you move the microphone, bump anything, or even just the cable from the microphone hits the boom pole, you're gonna pick that up in its sound recording. If you wanna take this one step further and do this just like a pro, often a sound engineer will use a lavalier and a boom mic in tandem for a single recording. They'll place a lavalier on each person that is gonna be speaking with in the scene and then use a single boom mic to switch between each person's dialogue. That way, if any one of them has an error, there is a backup recording that is gonna sound perfectly fine. What you wanna take from this is that you pick the right dedicated microphone for the application. If you're doing a sit down interview or someone who's not gonna move around a lot and there's not a lot of distractions happening around, you may be fine just using a lavalier plugged straight into your camera. If you're in a run and gun situation where you don't exactly know everything that's gonna happen for the day, you might wanna to try to use a boom microphone in order to have the flexibility to change where that microphone is recording. The next step in improving your audio is figuring out how you're gonna record the audio coming from these microphones. You may be used to connecting some microphones directly into your camera, and this is going to improve over your built-in onboard microphones, but the way to take it a step further is to have a dedicated audio recorder. These dedicated audio recorders are exactly what they sound like. They record audio, and that's kind of all they do, and they do it really well. What I have here is a Zoom H6, but again, there are a ton of manufacturers that make something similar that are gonna be able to record great audio quality. Many audio recorders will have multiple different channels they can record to. So here on my H6, I can plug in up to four different microphones to record the scene going on. And because there are four different inputs, 
that means I have four individual options to adjust how each microphone is being recorded. For instance, if I have two people speaking and one is really loud and one is really soft, I can make those accurate adjustments to make sure that they're both being recorded accurately. Also, what's not typically found on a camera is what's called phantom power. Phantom power isn't something you need to be afraid of, but it is a tool that's required to use higher end microphones. What phantom power does is via the XLR connection, you're able to power the microphone rather than have it run off a dedicated battery. Without phantom power, this microphone actually would be useless. A lot of tools and functions built into audio recorders are something you won't be able to find on a built-in camera audio control. You'll have things like clipping protection to make sure that your audio doesn't distort. A lot of audio recorders will have high cut or low cut filters to cut out unwanted frequencies in your recording. And dedicated audio recorders record audio tracks at a much higher quality than your camera can. The next step in recording audio like a pro has nothing to do with fancy microphones or pro level gear. It actually has to do with your surroundings and the location that you're filming at. What we really want is a quiet, uninterrupted recording session. Sometimes you have control over your location and sometimes you don't. You wanna do the best you can to find a nice, quiet location. It's gonna be uninterrupted to your filming process. If you're able to scope this out and choose that location ahead of time, it's best to keep that in mind before you choose a location. It might look best on camera and the visuals might be stunning, but if you can't record good audio, it's not gonna be usable at all anyway. If you're unable to choose your location ahead of time and you just kinda of, kinda of work with what's given, stand in the location that you're gonna be filming at and just listen for sounds. You could hear the AC running or refrigerator off in the distance or even some road noise coming from the front door. What we're gonna to try to do now is try to mitigate as much of that as possible. If you're filming during a hot summer, Turning off the AC might not sound like a great option, but it might be necessary. As a tip from a pro, what you wanna do is crank that AC up as much as you can during the setup process. And then once you're actually filming, cut it off and hopefully that cold air lingers as much as possible to keep you nice and cold. You can also find any computers or refrigerators humming along in the background and disconnect them if possible. Another pro tip to make sure that you turn that refrigerator back on is to leave a set of keys inside that fridge while you're filming. Of course, you can't leave without your car, so you're gonna remember to go retrieve those keys back at that refrigerator and plug it back in before you take off. So the last step is really controlling the environment that you're filming in as much as possible. And one big factor is reducing reverb. Reverb is essentially sound wave bouncing off of other hard materials and making their way back to the microphone or the subject that is speaking. Reducing reverb as much as possible is a great starting point and you're able to add reverb to your recording later in post if you wanna make that creative choice. A great way to reduce reverb in a location is to have a lot of soft sound absorbing materials such as rugs, carpet, curtains, or even soft furniture. But sometimes these materials in a space isn't enough. If you're trying to reduce reverb permanently on a room, there's also a few options you might've found on Amazon, such as these foam pads. These foam pads are usually just a thick piece of foam, either in different kinds of shapes and sizes, but they aim to soak up the sound that's hitting them before they're able to reflect back off the hard walls of the room. The room we're in now, I've actually treated with a little bit of foam pads that I found on Amazon. For this pack of four, I think it ran me about 25 bucks. Taking this one step further would be acoustic sound panels. You may have seen acoustic sound panels used in professional studio locations because they're awesome at trapping sound and reducing reverb. Essentially, they're a frame of two by fours filled with a thick insulation material that traps sound and really dead in the space. Where the foam I mentioned before is two inches thick at its thickest part, sound panels usually are between two and three inches thick and are a lot more dense. Unfortunately, if you're gonna buy these online or from a professional source, they can be kind of expensive, running anywhere between 100, 300, sometimes even $400 for a two by four sound panel. If you have a DIY mentality like I do, you can actually build these for cheaper than it costs to buy these foam panels like I did on Amazon. If you have access and the ability to use a saw and a drill, I think the total cost of materials to build eight of these acoustic treatment panels was about $150 to $200, making it about $30 a panel, which is comparable to these foam panels that I bought on Amazon. Just hanging up a few of these around your room is gonna cut down your reverb drastically. So all in all, stepping up your audio game and recording like a professional comes down to choosing the right equipment, the technique that you're using to record the audio, choosing the right location, 
and controlling the noise that is found in that location as much as possible. Audio really is 51% of a video. So getting good audio is really gonna make your videos look and sound more professional. So if you have any questions or comments or concerns about the things that I talked about today, feel free to leave it in the comments. You can follow me on Instagram and I hope to see you in the next video.